In this video, we're going to review a reproduction bayonet for the Italian M38 short rifle. Uh, this bayonet's a little bit unusual is because what it does is it comes in a sheath that can be attached to the belt and mount, mounted on the gun. And also, once it goes around the gun, it is designed to where you can press a button, take it, fold it over onto the rifle, and lock it into a folding position. These are kind of unusual and rare bayonets. Um, they go for like originals will go for like three hundred and some dollars. Uh, so they started making repros because even though they didn't produce over the years a lot of uh, M38 short rifles, they are quite common and easy to find. Um, and the bayonets actually demand more than the guns do, the rifles do. You know, people want 300 plus for these original ones, you know, if you can find them. So the repro <coughs> costs about 90 bucks. It's 89.95 in uh, the Atlanta Cutlery. I got this from Sarko. And it's about the same price, but the thing is, with the shipping and handling, if I just bought the bayonet alone, out of Atlanta Cutlery be like $102 where at Sarko uh, I bought several other items and the shipping was 12 bucks but for everything you know I bought four or five other different things so that's why I bought it from that company but that's what you're looking at it's about a $90 item shipping it's going to put you up to 100 but it's new and it's fairly well made Let's review Italian bayonets in general. There basically is this bayonet for the rifle. The other main bayonet would be this original. It's like called a sword bayonet or whatever. And it'll come in two ways. It'll have this metal sheath like this. Or it'll be in a leather sheath with a brass tip on the end down here. This little thing with the little pummel would be brass on a leather sheath with a metal uh, throat. <clears throat> this bayonet fits on all the long rifles, the 91 and the uh, 41. It'll fit on all the troop specials with the exception of the original troop special, which that bayonet is the rarest. It has like a pummel and a little side instead of your uh, lug going in here being pushed down, it has a slot carved in a handle here, I've only seen photographs of them, where it goes on and then rotates over onto that weird sideways bayonet lug. You can refer to my uh, video on that. So you got this bayonet, the odd one for the troop special, and a lot of them old ones were converted over to where they would take this type of bayonet and any of the troop specials made from 24 onward, I believe, use this bayonet. Um, so that's it. One size fits all. And the cavalry carbine <coughs> bayonets, which are mounted on there and fold, just fold in place. So, now this bayonet. Also, they have one similar. They have a similar one they sell for the Beretta. 38A uh, submachine gun, which is like a submachine gun carbine. So basically, how this works, you got two buttons on it. You got this button here, which activates to go on the stud on the rifle and locks, just like a standard bayonet. See it come up there, this little thing in the pummel. And then you have another button on the opposite side which, like I said, let's take the sheath off. This functions much like uh, the cavalry carbine. The screw here and the button here. The... Now when you depress this button, you pull forward on the blade and it comes up on latches. Then you would rotate it down, okay, and then 
push it back till it locks, which I don't know if it's new or if it's stiff. I have to do it like this. You hear it? It locks. It locks into place. The action is much like the cavalry carbine. Depress the uh, button, pull it forward, flip it around, push it back, lock it, and then to get it out, push the button, pull it down, rotate it forward, and you can see where that gap is there. You just push it till it locks. Pretty neat. Quality, you know, it looks similar to, uh, you know, the same finish and that and wood as the original. This is the original one. You know, blue and that. This is made by Windless. It says right out here, I was just looking. Windless made in India. So, not too terrible of a repro. Well, let's go and we'll try putting it on a rifle. Now, there is, in these bayonets here, there's another interesting thing. A lot of these were taken and converted into a fixed bayonet with a pummel and would permanently lock like a regular bayonet. I've seen examples of that. For some reason they had trouble with these on the rifle and the soldiers didn't like them. And I got a rifle over here, we're going to set up the camera and put it on. And uh, I think I found out what's, what the problem is or, or why they had trouble with it. Alright, I have my Italian Carcano short rifle, M38. This one's in uh, 6.5. I believe the bayonet will fit on either or, but this one here was the uh, handiest one I had. Now if we look at it, you know you have your bayonet stud here, and then the stock is grooved out here where the blade goes. So, like I said, it mounts just like a normal bayonet. You get it over the muzzle, line it up on the, on the stud. Line it up on the stud first, push down, and it locks into place. Okay. And then just like any other bayonet, you press that button in the rear and unlock it from the stud, and it comes off. Just like any other standard knife style bayonet. To excuse me, my hand sometimes just doesn't want to get. Okay, so now we have it mounted. Now, say we want to stow it again, like I said, we press the button, which is on this side now, this here. Press the button in, pull up. Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. Didn't quite get it locked on. I gave it a tug there. Loose. Or was I pressing the other one? Oh, whatever. Alright, we're in. We're locked. Must have had my finger on there. I can't feel this well with this hand. I must have had my thumb or something on there. Alright. So, again, now we want to fold it. So we go to this top button over here, which would be on the left hand if you're Got the gun facing the right way, it's on the left hand side. We depress this button here. We depress that button and pull the blade up forward. So now that it's up, it swings around much like our cavalry carbine. Goes down into our inlet in the stock. And see this is where the problem is to lock this thing. There's really, I can slide it up, but it's, I can't grab a hole of anything to shove it up in there to lock it. So, what we'll do, is like I said, I found if I take the bayonet off, fold it over. I don't know if the originals had the same problem or not. 
I fold it over, put the tip on the table, and press down until it locks in. Now it's locked in and the button popped back out, okay? Because what happens is if you look at it once you depress that and you're trying to push that back up on the rifle, it won't go. It won't lock. It goes back up a ways, but there's really no way to get your hands on it to push it up in there. Maybe it's because it's new or a repro and it's stiff. I don't know. If I don't have an original, so I can't tell. I'm just telling you what the repro is. Now that thing's locked on. Basically, that's what it looks like when you got it locked in. Okay? Which, yeah, I don't know, it kind of adds a little heft, but really not that noticeable. Kind of a weird thing to have it on there. Alright, then, again, reach around, push in, push in on the top button, then you tug down, which it, it moves. It's easy to grab it and pull it down. I can do that. Then you go up. Push it until it locks. Now your bayonet is fixed. Okay. Very interesting design. Kind of neat. That's why I had to get it. So we'll try this again. Go up and try to push it in. The blade's not sharp, but it's still a knife. You know, you don't want to be grabbing it and yanking real hard on it. No, I kind of don't want to go at all. But... Yeah, I can't get it. I cannot get it to kind of lock in there that way. So, <clears throat> that's about the only thing I've found with it. I don't know if the original suffered from the same fate because there was a problem. Ah, it didn't lock that time either. There was a problem where they reworked these bayonets, or maybe it does not lock. Hmm, let me examine this closer. Okay, <clears throat> I really don't know a lot about these uh, bayonets, and I don't know if it's just because it's a repro or if that is a design. If you notice when you press this latch here, no, I don't want it, and draw the bayonet out, if you notice there's these notches here and here. Well, inside the handle, there's two pieces of metal in there that go along this. And what I've noticed is I've got it to move up farther. But when you lock this, you'll see where that'll come out. But it does not go to where it snaps and locks in. It goes up quite a ways, but it won't go no matter what. I don't want to force it or break it to where it'll lock and click. Okay, it still can just be pulled out. Now, the back of this is knurled. I don't know if that's so you can push down to get the bayonet out. I don't know if that's how it's designed. I don't know if this repro just isn't working to where it doesn't lock. Uh, I'm not sure. It's still an interesting piece. And I mean, you know, if you wish to display your guns, you know, it uh, still is a neat looking thing. It appears that it doesn't lock because it's still well within the notch here. It's the way it goes, I guess. And then if you want to deploy your bayonet, you press down and then lock it in place. So that's my review of this uh, bayonet. It's an interesting, interesting accessory. Uh, like I said, without getting ridiculous and spending two to four hundred dollars, you know, hundred bucks, and you get to see how, you know, the idea how it works. 
uh, which is pretty cool. You know, that's it locked down on there. It's an interesting deal. Uh, again, it's up to you. If you know, you wouldn't mind having a little curiosity, a little extra thing for your rifle to show or you know to put there on display. Uh, it might be worth a hundred bucks or not. Some people might not. You know, you might even be able to pick up a Carcano for less than a hundred bucks, so you don't know. But that's uh, my look at it. I, I'm happy with it. I mean, for what it does, just for demonstrations and that. Um, like I said, I don't know if it's functioning correctly, if that's the way it was designed and that. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has videos with a, uh, an actual bayonet, you know, uh, other than a repro. But that's my review of the repro from uh, Windless Cutlery. And like I said, you can get these at Atlanta Cutlery and at Sarco. Uh, there may be other places you can buy them online. But still, it's a, it's a neat little thing.